Welcome uh, to the Rough Fish Registry. What's going on, Chase? Nothing. Just uh, made a quick drive down to Old Golden, Missouri to knock out a knock out a podcast. Yes, sir. I always you... love driving down here because you get to cross the lake, and I'm always looking out the off the bridges trying to see if there's any gar up or. Oh yeah, man, the lake is down. Oh, it's horrible. It's, here, hold uh, on. I got to pull this up. I should have had this on spot, ready to go. Table Rock's like 906 or 906? something. 906? I yep. think. Water levels. Yowza. Yep. 906. Yeah. So good. That good. was a guess. Yeah. No, it's true. So like a, you know, a good nine feet down. Yeah, I'd say a lot of the spots we uh, we normally frequent are well out of the water. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll make it. We need to get some rain. You know, I look at it as it puts the fish in a smaller bowl. So they got to be easier to find. That's true. Smaller bowl. Smaller bowl. Yeah. It's a lot smaller. I don't, but we have to get creative then. Yes. Definitely have to. I think on your our GPS units, you can actually go in and adjust the water level. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it'll still show you the flats. If where, that is if you have like the Navionics or Lake Master, right? Yes. I think I have a Navionics card in mine. Sweet. Yeah. I got the Lake Master. It works pretty well. I think it's the same company, isn't it? Or is it? No. Well, it may be now, but there's two different cards. That is. I do. Because I think my dad runs one in his front unit for when he's up front fishing, and then he runs a different card in his back oh. unit for different options. I know we set up um, the guys from Garmin. They're based out of Kansas City. And through a friend of a pro staffer or something like that, they had put up some... We we got them hooked up with some batteries for their um, boats that go out and survey the lakes. Yeah, like sonar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, so they basically just have like three or four boats they built specifically to drive around bodies of water. And they just do the maps. Do the mapping. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's pretty awesome. It was a pretty cool little project they were working on. But it wouldn't be a bad job. Just cruise around all day. It'd be kind of fun, yeah. 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 Plus, if you did fish or do anything, you'd know. If, I mean, you could troll, I guess, while you're working if you really wanted to. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, did you do, uh, you do anything fun this week? This week? Or last? Yeah. Uh, man, not really. No. I worked a lot. Just the grind and. Yep. I was in the beautiful town of Columbia, Missouri for three days. Yeah. That was fun. Uh, did you go to, uh, they always got some good concerts up there. You didn't get to... Uh, Not this week. Was it the Blue Note? Is that what that is? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true. That's true. No, I did last time I saw the Turnpike Troubadours. Yeah. They're killer if you're into that kind of thing. They're from Tulsa, so yeah, they got semi-local. Uh, yeah, I got them on Pandora. I listened yeah. to them a little bit. Well, what episode number is this, Chase? This is number six? Number six. Man, oh man. Here we go. So... We are going to talk about something that I have a little bit of a background in. Um, I should know probably more than I already, or show, I should know more than I do know, but I know quite a bit. Um, we're going to talk about batteries. Yes. And we're going to talk about electrical systems and all that fun stuff and some frequently asked questions that I get tagged on Facebook about. You know, how many batteries does my boat need? How long will it run? Uh, you know, the common the common types of questions uh, regarding to trolling motors, lights, the the whole nine yards. How big a cable do I need, et cetera, et cetera. So. Yeah, I always, uh, I'm probably the worst about tagging you. I see a battery question, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I'll just tag Pate. He'll know the answer to that. <laughs> I do sometimes, and but sometimes, I had an interesting one last night, and I, I'm not going to oust the guy, because I mean, it's it was a you know, it was a good question. It was an interesting question. I had to burst his bubble and say, no, that, that won't work at all. He wanted to know if his onboard charger could be used as a charger while he was trolling. So, like, instead of getting a PowerMax converter or something just like that. Just use his onboard. Just use his onboard charger. And he took it a step farther, and he was saying, I want to hook up multiple leads to one battery so that I can charge, like, Instead of one 15 amp bank, charge like 45 amps in yeah. one battery. <laughs> I'm already lost. Okay. So basically, so you have like a three bank charger. Yeah. Think of it like this you're taking one three bank charger and hooking all the leads on one battery. Okay. 
So you're tripling up your... In theory, you'd be tripling up your power. Uh-oh, my computer just done at us. But with an onboard charger, they are all automatic these days. Mm -hmm. So you can plug it in. It senses the voltage that the battery's at, which is the voltage is used to find its current state of charge. So then it says, okay, you're at 12.4, which is about 75% charged. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to start running through its charge profile. Well, if you think about it like this, you're stacking up three different units on one. Yeah. We'll say the first one reads the voltage at 12.4 and it hits it with 14 volts. The second one's going to read it and go, oh, well, it's got 14 volts in it. It's not going to do anything. The third one's going to do the same thing. And essentially, the machine will just confuse itself and it'll just stop. Hmm. So it actually wouldn't charge any at all in the battery. Yeah. It'd just get, it'd get messed up. I'm going to need you to pass me a pen so I can take notes. Cause yeah. I'm, I'm a... What I will post a... Uh, I'm actually going to be going through... Um, a battery 101 that battery outfitters uses for all new associates and staff. So it's, it's kind of a, it's a long word document, but it kind of goes over all of these mainstays of what a battery does or, or how it works. And uh, I'm going to keep it, I'm going to make it quick that part of it. Cause sometimes some people want to know those kind of details and other people are just like, no, just tell me how to hook it up. So yeah, your I, pictures you draw on Facebook, I will say are, are pretty nice. I they, don't know if you scratch that on a, on a napkin at a restaurant or what? But uh, I've yeah, I've done that. I've been tagged multiple times at night, like I'm like sitting in bed. I'm like, oh crap, I gotta find a piece of paper and start. Is this like seven thirty when you go to bed? Uh, more like eight <laughs> fifteen. You know, I call this guy at like eight thirty, and he's like half asleep. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, dude, I'm in bed. I'm not asleep. I just you know I'm relaxing. The bad thing is I'm probably in bed too when I call you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I get, you know, I go work at seven, get off at five and, you know, eat dinner the whole nine yards. And it's like eight o'clock, kid goes to bed, wife's pregnant. She just wants to relax. It's like, why not? Yeah, no, I get it. hundred percent. I've, I've been in that same boat as you. Mm. So let's just dive right in and go over. You hear all these, what is it called when something has like a three letter abbreviation oh so like uh, between like an sli so an sli is starting lights and ignition is what that initially stands for um, or a conventional battery so like well, a wet battery is yeah so i was thinking more like uh you know the agm yeah, yeah, compared yeah. to a wet cell yeah so that yeah an sli is the kind of the three letter okay. term for that for a starting battery. For a starting battery. Or a deep cycle that's flooded. So Gotcha. So a flooded battery versus an AGM. So a flooded battery, you'll also see it called an SLI, which stands for starting, lighting, and ignition. Well, it can also be a deep cycle battery, and it doesn't do any of those things. Hmm. But that's just the, the little quote term that they give it. So a starting battery is more... I work in the truck stop industry, so a starting battery is like... would be like drinking a Red Bull and putting all your energy out at once and then you crash kind of, and mm -hmm. then a deep cycle would be like eating a good meal and having good energy for a long period of time. That's a good analogy. Sure. I just thought of that. That's good. Yeah. I like it off the top of my head. Wow. Uh, so, so yeah, the, the short, so basically it's just like a, either a short burst of, of power or a sustained, um, smaller output of power over a, you know, period of time. So, uh, we'll get into that. The AGM, though, because you asked about the three-letter mm -hmm. three -letter terms. So the AGM stands for absorbed glass mat, which essentially um, uh, means that the battery is completely sealed and there is no active fluid in it any longer. The acid was poured into it in the manufacturing process and then it was charged. Um, the glass mat in the AGM, so absorbed glass mat, then um, absorbs that electrolyte and mm -hmm. holds that in place and uh, functions similar to, um, it just kind of holds it in between the plates so that uh, the chemical reaction can continue to happen instead of sloshing around inside there. So, so AGMs do have the lead plates in them still, mm -hmm. but yep. it's just the different type of liquid. Or, yeah, and, and yeah. A, another thing you'll hear a lot of people say is like, oh, I want one of them gel batteries. I, I'm not going to say there are no gel. There's, there's still gel out there. They are used in very... Uh, uh, niche markets like 
mobility chairs and some uh, very strange oddball. So 99% of the time when somebody says gel, they actually mean AGM. Okay. It's just because it's sealed and there's no actual liquid inside. So that, that's covered. Gotcha. Okay. So battery group sizes. Different battery applications call for different battery group sizes or group numbers. Um, in the marine industry, guys, you'll see a lot of things like a 24, 27, uh, a 29, which is also known as a 31. So, for instance, and really the only difference, the height and the width of those are the same. Uh, it's just the length. So you're going to have, um, going from a 24 to 27, you're going to have about an inch and a half longer. 27 to 31, another about an inch and a half. They just get bigger and bigger. So so is that more plates in them, more mm-hmm, capacity mm-hmm. is what All that is? Above. Okay. It can be more... Um, more plates in it for deep cycle purposes. So it'll have a larger reserve capacity or amp hour, or it can also be um, more starting power. Okay. Okay. So more lead means more reserve power or more starting power. So um, if you can make a, you know, a 31 fit, oftentimes, you know, it's going to be a better choice, especially on the deep cycle side, because it's going to have more capacity. So for instance, pro guide 24 AGM is an 80 amp hour battery. If you're thinking about minutes, that's usually about 155 minutes reserve capacity. Our 31 AGM is 110 amp hours. So comparatively to minutes, that's about 215. And that's at a 25 amp draw. So, gotcha. So that's a, almost double. Is that right? Uh, no, no. So like one, 155. To oh, two, 155. Yeah. I thought you said 115. Okay. Yeah. No, no. Gotcha. But, you know, I was it's staring a, out the window. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I, this is this is awkward or not awkward. This is random. Uh, I had a salesman in here yesterday, and we were talking, and they're painting the exterior of the building, mm-hmm. and like you, sh- <laughs> I heard this noise, and he had this like terrified look on his face, and I turned around, and there's some dude's head that just popped up at the second story window, just like <laughs> just like out of nowhere. He was like, "Oh man, that just freaked me. <laughs> that just caught me way off guard." Oh, so that's awesome. It was kind of funny. So. That's awesome. I no more rabbit trails. Yeah. Okay. So we've kind of we've kind of started this, but uh, another question we get is, what is a deep cycle battery? Well, a deep cycle battery is designed to store energy that will be drawn over an extended period of time and be recharged in order to repeat that process. A common application: uh, golf cart, trolling motor, solar, solar energy power, electric wheelchairs, et cetera, et cetera. So, anytime you're hooking up batteries to your lights or trolling motor, you do not want a starting battery in that application. You want a deep cycle battery. You're not looking for those short bursts of energy. You're looking for that long, sustained duration of power. So a deep cycle battery is made to do that. Deep cycle means that it's made to be drawn down, deeply discharged, um, and then recharged back numerous amount of times. A starting battery has a different plate structure, thinner plates, um, and just an overall different design, and it is made to not be drawn down in the recharged and drawn down and recharged. It is made to just have those short bursts of power, then have, as a car or vehicle or boat is running, be charged through the alternator. Gotcha. So I think we talked about this when I built my boat. Um, some of the newer fuel-injected motors, this is talking about starting batteries, mm-hmm. the newer fuel-injected motors are the motors that have a lot of electronics in them. hmm they require a certain amount of, is it volts? CCAs. So if you do actually look at the owner's manual for the new Mercury motors, they actually will specify, and it says um, we need to have 800 CCAs. Whenever you talk to um, a couple of the Mercury technicians, they'll actually say that um, it's a it's a specific voltage that... that that the ECM has to have so the fuel injection works properly, and that the EC then the CCAs are used as just a a bar, so okay. to speak. So whenever because um, whenever you crank that motor, you know a battery's voltage drops because of the load, and it needs the voltage needs to stay above a certain threshold. Mm-hmm. And if you have a lower CCA rated battery, it's going to the bigger that you know, that initial starting power from that motor, Mm -hmm. it's going to pull the voltage down lower than what a higher CCA battery would. Gotcha. And, but in essence, it's really just needing a specific voltage. So with an AGM battery, 
they are not nearly as affected by that um, initial burst of power. So your voltage drop is a little bit less. Okay. So you can oftentimes get away with less than 800 CCAs with an AGM battery because the ECM is not going to be getting a such a dip in voltage. So gotcha. I'm going to try not to get too technical in this, but and and some people to some people that's not very technical at all. But other people will be like, you lost me there. So yeah, so it just basically needs enough power to fire the ECM mm-hmm. and to. I guess fire the fuel injectors before yeah, it's the just, motors. It's a, it's a, and I'm not a mercury technician, but from what I understand, it has to do with the ECM in the fuel system. Otherwise, it'll just, you know, it won't, it won't fire. It'll, gotcha. it'll stop the, stop the motor from hurting itself because it's not getting the fuel it needs. Okay, so gotcha. That's the, that's that. Okay, so, um, that that kind of plays into the next question. Um, a lot of people ask, what is what does CCA, CA, and RC mean? So um, what are these all about? These are standard um, that, that battery companies use to rate the output and capacity of a battery. So CCA is a measurement of the number of amps a battery can deliver at zero degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds. That is zero degrees, and you're cranking your bone for 30 seconds. So CCA is cold cranking amps. Yeah. Okay. Most most marine batteries a lot of times are rated at MCAs, which is the same thing as a cranking amp, which is measured at 32 degrees, cranked for 30 seconds. So in today's world, it's just a number used to signify how much power it is. Oftentimes, anything over a 150 or 150, I'll even say 115, you want about 800, 800 cold cranking amps. Yeah. So I think that's and what that's, my and 115 that, had. Yeah, so that's the normal... Um, that's a that's a normal industry standard for really they come out like 550 or 800. So this is the those numbers are basically used to for all batteries to be able to compare them to each other. Yeah, in so a, you got in an the apple. same way. Mm-hmm. Apples to apples. Apples to apples. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, when you're looking at when you're looking at starting starting batteries. Cuz there's a lot of batteries that and I think you were telling me about this that and it, it may be the deep cycle side but we were talking about how you can buy one battery at a discount vendor type store, you know, at a Walmart or something like that. And they say, well, it's still a, a group 31 battery, but that battery, when you compare those numbers may not compare to another group 31 that may be a little more expensive, but you're getting a lot more battery for the, for what you're getting. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, so that is that's just an easy way for the consumer to look at it and go, okay, well, I see this one, and it is a Group Twenty Seven, and it, uh, but it's got you know it's X amount of dollars, but it's one hundred and fifty minutes of reserve capacity, or it's mm-hmm. you know six hundred CCAs. Well, when you look at the other bat, another product, and say it's one hundred and eighty minutes reserve capacity and seven hundred fifty CCAs. There's there's a reason that battery costs more money is because it has more lead in it. Gotcha. And uh, it's going to have more reserve capacity, so it's going to have a longer runtime. It's going to have more CCAs, so it's going to be a hotter starting battery. So, yeah, that's that's definitely something to look at. Um, they are going to weigh more, though, right? They are going to weigh more, definitely. Yeah. And yeah. that's another way to just a quick hillbilly, you know, figure out um, if you if you grab one and it's substantially lighter than the other. Uh, there's a you know, there's a reason for that. The, the cheap one's going to be quite a bit lighter. Uh, yeah, most of the time. So that's kind of just an old battery guy trick. But you know, got to have some because the label can say anything. Yeah, and that's the other thing you got to be careful of. So if if it's got the same ratings and you pick one up and it's like six pounds different, buddy, it ain't the same rating. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of an old trick, but not a very not a very cool one. So um, so. I will say this though, whenever you're looking at, and in, in, in most cases, everybody's got a you know a motor, a big motor to run around. So you're gonna have one starting battery in a boat fishing boat, and it's not near as critical as it is in a bass fishing situation because the bass fishing guys are running four graphs and a big boom and stereo sometimes, and live wells and power poles and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas us, we are running all these lights and stuff on a deep cycle battery, maybe through converters, maybe not. Um, so in the bass fishing world, the starting batteries become the most important thing. And in our world, it's the deep cycle product. Yeah. So there's actually a way to, 
is kind of off the subject, but my dad always does it. He's got a jumper wired in to where if he does run his his starting battery down when he's fishing and running his graphs and running the the live wells and everything that he can flip a switch and he's got the his 36 volt trolling system to where it'll dump full power into his starting battery is that right yeah so what it does is it isolates a single 12 volt battery okay out of that uh so so if you which which basically just gives you kind of an extra extra jumper and and boats are doing that now and it's smart because a lot of guys were just taking a pair of jumper cables and you know jumping Mm -hmm. over and and that works fine, but you can also run the risk of, you know, shorting out, you know, your troll motor or, or some graphs or, or something. Whereas, you know, a hardwired in option with a marine switch is a better choice. Yeah, so. it makes a cheap way to, uh, to be guaranteed if, you mm-hmm. know, you're you have a hard starting motor, you can get it started if you need to, you know, and you've run your starter down to yeah. where you can't can't get it started. Mm-hmm. So when we're looking at, and I, and I, I've said this a bunch on social media and emails. If you're looking at deep cycle batteries for your trolling motor, for your lights, forget CCAs. It does not matter. That's not what you're looking for. You want to look at the, the RC, which is stands for reserve capacity, or you want to look at the AH, which is amp hours. And the higher, the better. Because 90% of the time, the reserve capacity is rated at 25 amps. Well, if you're standing on a trolling motor... A thirty-six volt trolling motor, full power. Um, a full uh, a Minkota one fifteen can pull like fifty-six amps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So so say you've got three batteries rated at one hundred eighty minutes at twenty-five amps. I mean, you know, your full power run. You can you can do the math. It's not going to last one hundred eighty minutes because that's at a fifty-six amp draw versus a twenty-five. So uh, obviously, the more capacity the better. So we need to look at reserve capacity or amp hours. And a lot of times the reserve capacity is put on the flooded battery and the amp hour is put on an AGM. Like our 31 AGM is rated at 110 amp hours. We also put the reserve capacity on there just because it's such a common thing that people ask for. Yeah. Um, but but in the deep cycle AGM world, they are 90% of the time rated by amp hours. So amp hours is basically the number that they can use to figure out how mm-hmm. long their batteries are going to run on X amount of lights or with X trolling motor. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have to know what your, what your draw rate is as well. But, uh, so for instance, an amp hour is a rating that battery manufacturers use to signify how much power their, their product can output. So for instance, if you have a, 110 amp hour battery like the pro guide 31 agm you can draw and it, it the 110 amp hour is set at a 20 hour rate so that's at a discharge rate of 20 hours so what you do there is you just do your math and you say okay so 110 amp hours divided by 20 so over that 20 hour time you will have get my calculator out i should have used an easier number if you call it 120, that'd be six, wouldn't it? So, yeah, so you're basically using 5.5 amps over that 25 hour. So, what's important to, to remember though is that's like a consistency over that 20 hour rate. Now, what we're doing now in a light, yeah, so lights would be lights will be consistent. Now, in trolling, you obviously you're going to have fluctuations in power, and a uh. You know, a Minn Kota troll motor is going to pull a lot more than five amps, even mm-hmm. at, even at a really low setting. So obviously, you're not going to be able to run for twenty hours. So on one battery. So with with that being said, you have to realize that uh, um, just when you ramp up your use, that number will decrease. It's not a consistent over that time frame. So even so, say I've got a, a thirty-five amp trolling or a motor that's pulling 35 amps, Mm -hmm. it's not going to be able to pull um, 35 amps at that exact rating because it's going to be more than the 20-hour rate. Gotcha. Okay? So so if you said, well, it's a 110-amp-hour battery uh, divided by a 35-amp draw, it should run 3.14 hours. It's really not going to do that because that is at a higher sustained rate draw rate than what the battery was rated at. Okay. So, 
anyway, I don't want to get too get too far down the rabbit trail, but just know that you know the um, that that's your usable amount of power, and for the most part, that's going to be that's going to be fairly accurate. So, Is, would would you have a way, and it maybe it may be too hard, but to just take a twelve volt trolling motor mm-hmm. is going to pull on average how many amps? Oh gosh! Well, we or could, just use whatever your numbers are easier for you. Whatever you're running, you know that number. Your twenty four volt. Yeah, so twenty four volt would run forty. Will pull forty five amps at one hundred percent power. So it'll pull forty five amps at one hundred percent power. So if someone's wanting to try to get a general idea of Say they're looking at two batteries. Mm-hmm. Say they're looking at a Walmart battery that's rated at what would a Walmart AGM be rated? I mean, just oh, you know they'll they'll be rated at. And the other thing you got to look at too is beyond the rating is actually the build quality of the product. Yeah, um, that's gonna that's gonna play into account. Um, it may cycle that one time, or it may cycle twenty times at that specified rate. Okay, um, but. Th- the higher the build quality, the more cycle counts you'll get. So the more times you'll be able to run that battery to that same level of discharge. Gotcha. So a, a lesser quality product is not going to have the same amount of cycles that a that a higher quality product will. So if you're average Joe trying to see, all right, if I spend a hundred dollars on this battery, mm-hmm. and it's maybe not a great quality battery, but it's gonna somewhat get the job done mm-hmm. and then they've got a better quality battery that maybe has would 20 more amp hours be out of the question or you know you'll you'll definitely see uh, longer run time with 20 amp hours more mm-hmm. um uh bang for the buck it it really there's there's so many variables um in the in the well, I can say this: We've been testing our products in the bow fishing world for two years now, and I've run the same set for two years. Um, Twenty-four volt trolling motor, um, heavy discharged every every night, and um, I actually used it on a discharge machine, which um, takes that battery and 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 truly tests how much capacity it has left. Mm-hmm. Which basically, so um, the battery, brand new, should run about fifty-two minutes at a. Uh, at a 70 amp draw. Okay. Brand new. That's what it should run. So after two seasons on my 31 AGMs, my test data showed that it ran 46 minutes. Okay. Okay. So comparatively to 52 for a brand new 46 for a two year old. Um, that's a, that's a pretty good rating or, you know, a battery is not a, not a living thing, but it's, um, you know, it's a chemical reaction that's happening and you obviously batteries don't last forever. So, uh, especially in, in an application like bow fishing where you're heavily discharging it every, every time you go out. Um, so for to lose, you know, what is that? Uh, just a little bit more than 10% over a two year, mm-hmm. uh, time frame. That's, that's pretty good. You guys had some batteries in a, a bass boat. I saw the video mm-hmm. on Facebook yeah. and they'd been in there for five years. Yep. Yeah. So, um, we tested the this was your first agm you tested right mm-hmm. trying yeah. to find out what really really works yeah so there's a lot of different options out there um for uh agm product um we didn't want to come out with a product with our name on it that didn't have you know our kind of our seal of approval really so we we put about mm, three or four sets out um and it's now about seven years ago. Hmm. And uh, Pete Winters, who's a local guide and fisherman, started with the first set. And he fished, um, he fishes about 260 days a year. And his average on a flooded battery, they would last um, about 10 to 11 months. And he'd have to change them out. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, you know, for that amount of usage, which is pretty normal for a flooded battery. So he put a set of uh, these test batteries in. And ran them for two years straight, and at the two year mark, he was a little uh, just the batteries were performing great, but he was just like, "Hey, I can't, you know, risk you know being out and something happening." Mm-hmm. So we took the batteries out, we gave them to um, 
another gentleman that tested them as a trout guide on Lake Taney Como, and he ran them uh, two more years. Same batteries. Same batteries, same exact batteries. So at this point, they've been in the field for, for four years, and the second gentleman fished uh, not as much as Pete, probably... I think it was like 180, 200 days a year. So still, you mm-hmm. know, heavy use. Um, yeah, there's a lot of current in that lake, too, that he'd be oh, yeah, in there yeah, fighting, fighting for sure. Yeah. And uh, they actually pulled him out after the fourth year, and they were still they were still going. They obviously starting to show some, you know, some end of life, and they threw him in another guy's boat just to kind of run him out the rest of the way. And uh, we ran him another almost a year, a year and a half. So five and a half years at a one set, um, easily over... 700 cycles mm-hmm. which is you know pretty great out on the water yeah um your average battery manufacturer will guarantee up to like 300 gotcha three to 400 so to have 700 out of the bag i mean we we were confident in the product and that's that battery is now what we have is a 31 agm so gotcha yeah it's it's a so we we want to take you know these there's a lot of test data that can show, hey, you know, this thing's going to cycle like it's supposed to, yada, yada, yada. But, you know, we're from the show me state. So we wanted to see mm-hmm. it and, and uh, you know, get it all proved and have a story like that so that we could go out and confidently, you know, move it. So, but the, but the question for a lot of guys is whether or not I should go with an AGM battery or a flooded battery. So you got to ask yourself a couple questions. And I'm, you know, I sell batteries. So obviously I want to sell the AGMs, Mm -hmm. but that's not the right choice for everybody every time. Um, One of the things about flooded batteries that a lot of guys or a lot of people don't get good um, results out of is because they're not maintained properly. Mm -hmm. So the first question is, are you going to properly water and maintain and charge your batteries? You have to to put water in your batteries? Yeah, you do. Is there a specific kind of water? Distilled. Distilled water. Distilled okay. water. Yep. Not tap water, not a garden hose water. And and you can, but we don't it's not recommended. And the reason is is because there's a lot of minerals mm-hmm. in your well water, in your city water. Yep. And uh, they can have an adverse effect on the lead plates in the battery. So distilled water is what you want to put gotcha. in the battery. So and they're just little screw holes in the top of mm-hmm. them, you unscrew yep. and or fill caps them up. or whatever. Caps. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to put water just above the plates. Okay. And the other thing that's important is you want to ch- you want to fill the batteries after they've been charged. Hmm. Okay. So say you run them down way far. Yep. And uh, you pop the cap. You're like, oh boy, those are dry. I better I better mm-hmm. charge them up. Well, sometimes some of that water will be um, sucked up in there. Okay. I don't really know how another way to say it. But not really absorbed, but not it, really absorbed, you lose but a little bit you, of water. You'll lose some of it. So when you go to charge it, um, if you fill it up and it's discharged, and then you go to charge it, that, that's going to boil over. Gotcha. They're going to come out of the top. You're so I had, back before I got acquainted with you, I had a set of 27 series. I don't remember where I got them at, but I had a, so three of them, I was running a 36-volt troller, and I had converters on them. And I ran them for about a year and a half. And then all of a sudden, I walked in the barn one day, noticed a peculiar smell Ooh. coming out of my boat. and uh, Nasty smell. Yeah, the batteries were, I mean, they were so hot I couldn't touch them. And I, I probably needed to add a little bit of water to them, would have been my guess. Yeah, um, uh, converters are great. Uh, they let you stay out there all night, even longer. Um, but... They can wreak havoc on batteries, mm-hmm. um, especially if you're not maintaining them and watering them. And think about it like this. I mean, that thing's just getting cooked all night long. Yep. So you're going to need to add water. Um, traditionally, we say you need to add water three times a year. Mm-hmm. But if you're fishing you know, from March through August and you're running converters, I would check the water... Um, I mean, you could check it monthly to be safe you if you really. Check, I, I mean, monthly would be really safe. Um, that would probably be good, be good. Um, so so that's that's a super important step. Um, to 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 do if you are going to run a flooded battery, a flooded deep cycle. Would um, you recommend? This is a little off subject, but 
if you run converters, the way I had mine set up was I didn't have a battery charger. Mm-hmm. I used my converters to charge my batteries. Is that... That's fine. I mean, it works. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know. Yeah, because I've, it charged I've, at such a higher amp. Um, Is it the charge a higher amp right there? 55 amp a piece, I think. I believe um, the, bow, the the converters that I've ran with the bow fishing model, mm-hmm. and it wasn't a charger and... Okay. Uh, it had that lower voltage, so it didn't react improperly with the uh, trolling motor board. So um, I don't know the exact specifications on the trolling or the, excuse me, the charging profile mm-hmm. for what those, what those charged at. But I, if I recall, I mean, it would just be a normal um, charging profile. So maybe it, it might be a higher amperage. Gotcha. But if you were running, um, so what were those, 12 volt? PM three fifty fives. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was a fifty five amp. I don't know if it, in the charging process it was pushing all fifty five amps. That would probably be a little extreme mm-hmm. uh, for for a standard battery charge, but um, it it would work obviously. Yeah, that'd be a question for PowerMax. Yeah, because I think if I remember right, when I read on a website or something, they were talking about that, like you said in a couple episodes ago, they they go into bulk mode mm-hmm. right off the bat, but then they from there they go into a lower, mm-hmm. they push a lot less yeah. if they're not being pulled on on the other end. Yeah, a lot of chargers like the Minn Kota or the NOCO will have like um, sometimes four, sometimes seven different series that they run through as the battery is being charged. And it starts and it says, okay, the battery's this day to charge and we're going to run it up to like 14, 7 volts and we're going to pump some voltage into it first and then we're going to point the voltage down and push some more amps into it. And it just kind of goes through a cycle and it um, kind of conditions the battery for proper charging. Um, okay, so the question is, if you're going to properly water and maintain your batteries, a flooded is great. If you're not, an AGM is a good option. Mm-hmm. Um, the other question is, are you fishing super rough water? Is the boat getting smashed around? Is it beat around often? Is it you know stable and secure? Um, an AGM battery, any AGM battery is going to be far more vibration resistant. Mm -hmm. So as the battery gets a little bit older in its life and the plates become a little bit more brittle, a flooded battery can sometimes, you'll see guys be like, oh, it dropped a cell. Well, uh, because of the construction of a flooded battery, um, the the plates in there, you could, you know, if you cut the top off one and you cut the welds in between each cell, you could pull them out with Mm -hmm. your hand. Um, So if it's getting beat around on like Lake the Ozarks four nights a week, and that uh, water sloshing back and forth. The water putting, sloshing back and forth, but also just this the you know, this the yeah, know, hitting, bouncing around, yeah. hitting waves or whatever. Um, you can you can drop a cell because the, the welds will actually crack or a play will break and uh, after it's got a little age on it, and uh, you'll just drop a cell and it'll be done. And there's nothing you can do about that. So an AGM is better in that situation because it's, you know, our battery is 40% more vibration resistant than your standard conventional battery. And that's because those plates, once they're put into that um, cell, they are, they are compressed and then shoved down in there. So you can shake them and there's no wiggle. There's no, um, there's nothing to be kind of jostled around in there. It's, it's tight and it's, it fits. There's actually more lead in that battery because it is compressed like that, and it's going to be heavier than your standard conventional battery. So this is on your AGM. This is on the ProGuide AGM. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Or in, in really in any AGM battery, they're going to be com- they're sque- squeezed and then shoved down into the cell. But ours is rated at forty percent more vibration resistant than uh, than uh, your standard conventional. Gotcha. Because yeah. you guys are looking for something specifically for the boating mm-hmm. industry. If you remember, a lot of people will talk about Optimas. Mm-hmm. And we sell Optimas. It's, you know, it started off as a really, really good product, and um, for for Jeeps and stuff like that. And Jeeps would have this problem: they beat around and rock, rock calling and stuff, and they just destroy batteries because of what we just talked about, just getting abused. Optimas look like the six pack, right? Mm-hmm. They got yeah. the yeah. And it's an interesting design because instead of plates being compressed together in a square and then shoved down into a square battery box, they're actually rolled up like a cinnamon roll. Okay. And they're they're really tight, and then they're shoved into those six pack cylinders gotcha so it's kind of a neat thing can but. your agms be mounted in any mm-hmm. any direction so if, i mean not that we would in a boat but. right on its side um on its end upside down technically yes but 
we don't recommend yeah. it because it could it could you know if it fell from the harness it would short potentially so we don't recommend upside down but the other question is do you allow proper charge time between um, use so uh, say you're fishing a big tournament mm-hmm. and it's a two day tournament um, are you are you going to be able to charge eight to ten hours in between each night that you go out because um, that's what a battery needs if you ran okay. if you ran it really you know, far down to say 80% depth of discharge, which means you've taken out 80% of that battery's capacity. Now, do, now, is there, will different chargers charge quicker or slower than others? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 110 amp hour battery, uh, say you have a Minn Kota 460 PC, which is a 15 amp per bank. Okay. Um, it would take, say you charged it to 80% depth of discharge, which means there's 20% capacity left. So roughly... 22 amp hours so you are um what would that be 88 amp hours short of where full capacity is so you basically just do your math at that point mm-hmm. and you say okay so you know if i ran it about all the way i did um i'm gonna need to put back 88 amps in this battery well i've got a 15 amp hour charger which is the most um highest rated per bank charger out there okay so that would take um, six and a half hours. Gotcha. Okay. Well, a lot of guys have a five amp. Mm-hmm. So if it's a five amp, it's going to take 18 hours. Or if it's a 10 amp, it's going to take, uh, what is that? 12. So is there any, I know back when I was a kid, my dad, I mean, back before they even had onboard chargers for boats that he'd have, you know, three or four battery chargers sitting in the garage and, He'd get home from fishing and he'd hook all his battery chargers up. And he always talked about trickle chargers. Mm-hmm. So what is there an advantage to charging slower or faster? Um, no. No? Okay. The, uh, well, a trickle charger, for instance, is just, um, it's exactly what it sounds like. So, for instance, a, like a battery tender, which is a really common one that people will talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, the common battery tender is a .75 amp. So it's not it's not really a charger. It's more of a maintainer. Okay. So as the battery sits, so for instance, say you got a classic car or something that sits in the garage for, you know, and you drive it six times a year or something yeah. like that. Well, if you put a trickle charger on it, that battery will stay maintained over the course of its natural life versus sitting there and becoming discharged because you don't drive it every gotcha. every every day. So okay, yeah. Um, so these onboard chargers, um, oftentimes can't or won't get your batteries back to where you need to, um, over that, over that time. So an AGM battery though will recharge 30% faster than a standard conventional battery. Okay. So that's another, that's another major benefit. So you can really cut down some of your charge time, um, and it can accept and, and simply, so even though it's, even though it's a 15 amp charger, um, and it's a 110 amp hour battery. The the battery can accept all 15 amps. I I, I want to make that clear. Um, it can accept all 15 amps versus a conventional or a wet battery, where um, you're going to lose some of that amperage in the charging process. Gotcha. So it's kind of like you know pouring into a cup too fast. Mm-hmm. Some of it's going to spill. Whereas that amp hour or that where that AGM is going to have a bigger mouth and take it all. <laughs> gotcha. So yeah, that was strange. We'll keep. So is is there a way that your normal hillbilly bow fisherman running a trolling motor can figure out? I mean, I, I guess all trolling motors are kind of the same, but if he wants to figure out how many amps his trolling motor is pulling, so he can maybe decide if he wants to upgrade his batteries or maybe add another set to keep it, make sure he can run all night. Mm-hmm. Is there, is there a way they can, whether, I mean, I guess it'd just be a little, it, I really wish there was because it's so, I mean, unless you just knew as soon as you unloaded your boat that you were running at full power the whole time, oh, like okay. you never backed off just because a quarter twist of the throttle could mean 45 amps or 32. So there's a mm-hmm. big spread between, you know, it, 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 a lot of times comes down to the fishing style. Yeah, yeah. So, but can but for a but for a light, you can um, do some do some math, 
and uh, figure out how long it, it will run for. So, um, you gonna we'll, jump right into lights, or are we? Uh, we yeah, we can. We definitely can. So, um, twelve twenty four volt lights. Um, if you're if you're wanting to run those, you want to run silent. It really kind of just depends on your style. There's a lot of different reasons to run just battery power on your lights, or maybe you are running a converter into a battery bank into lights. Um, at that point, I, I I mean, if you're running a generator, I'd probably just run you know a one ten light. Yeah, we ran those for a long time with no issues. Yeah, but that's. Uh, uh, could you use that converter to say you run silent and you decide to move spots? Mm-hmm. Could you turn your lights off, kick the converter on to get to keep those batteries somewhat topped off throughout the night? You can, um, you can do that. Uh, the and then there's a it, it depends. Um, some folks, okay, so one thing that if you've got plenty of capacity on your generator, yes. Mm-hmm. Now, there are some people, I think you even told me this on your old boat, that you had to um, kick your generators on to, to troll. Yes, I had to start them off. You had to start them off. With them on. With them on. Because mm-hmm. if, you, if you ran without them, you would max out your generator. Yes. And it would, it would you know, throw a, a, a fuse. So you can do that. But one thing you got to realize is um, the power max converter is going to pull, um, basically it's going to assess the battery. So if it's, if it's at 100% state of charge, it's just going to be pushing through exactly what the lights or the trolling motor is pulling out. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's just going to be pushing through that power and it just kind of works as a conduit or just a, you know, a, back, a backup just in case. If you run silent for a while and then try to kick on your generator converter, it's going to go into one of those bulk charging stages and it's going to be trying to not only run the lights that are being pulled from the batteries, but it's also going to try to bring that battery back up to 100%. So it's going to put a heavier load on your generator. So if you are right on the edge, say you've got a 2,000 watt generator Mm -hmm. and you're trying to run one 24 volt converter you can't really run for three or four hours silently and then kick it on because it's going to overload your generator. Yeah, it'll kick it into the bulk charge mm-hmm. on the converter, which which pulls a lot more watts. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So I don't know if that answered exactly what you were looking or what the question was, but the the the, the point is that you can take your lights and say, okay, so I've got 10 50-watt lights that I'm running. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's 500 Watts. And, uh, you can say, well, I'm, I'm either going to need a 600 Watt generator to run that, Mm -hmm. or I'm going to need a certain amount of battery power to last that long. So all you got to do is you got to do a little math and it's not that hard. So say you do have, um, 10 50 Watt lights. So what you have to do is you take your total wattage, which is then 500 Watts, 50 times 10, yeah. So yeah. anyway, 500, 500 total watts. And then you divide by your voltage. So mm-hmm. for instance, if you're a 12, 24 light, so you need to say, okay, well, I'm, am I running this off one 12 volt battery or am I running this off of two batteries that are series to 24 volts? Okay. So for instance, say 500 watts divided by, we're going to have two series batteries, 24 volts. You're going to have a pull of 20.83 amps. So, what that means is you're pulling 20 amps an hour consistently. Okay? Okay. All right? So, say you have a 110 amp hour battery. Call it 120 because it will divide by 20 easier. That's that's fine. 120 amp hour battery. Or 100 amp hour battery. Yeah, there you go. That's that's far more common. 100 amp hour battery. Okay? Um, and And you series that. And a series is where you take two batteries connect the positive and the negative in between the two batteries Mm -hmm. so that you have basically then one battery with one positive and one negative. So to create 24 volts. So you hook it up and you've got basically a 24 volt battery that is now a hundred amps. It doesn't, whenever you put them in series, you're doubling your voltage, not your amperage. Okay. Okay. So you're pulling 20.83. So you say, okay, I got a hundred amp hour battery. 
divided by 20.83. 4.8 hours of runtime is what you would have. Gotcha. Now, it is important to remember that all lights are not created equal. And our friends in China will fib about their wattage. Okay. So they say, oh, it's a 28 watt light. Were you getting to do an accent there? <laughs> no. No. I definitely wasn't. <laughs> definitely wasn't. Hey, listen. They're great folks. Um, I, I import and talk with um, some friends in, in Shenzhen every day. So Shenzhen, Shenzhen, China. That's where everything comes from, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Not maybe not everything, but everything battery related from China comes from Shenzhen. Anyway, or that general area. So you say, oh, I bought these twenty-eight watt lights on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Well, friends, so did I, and I did the math, and my battery system was supposed to only run like eight point two hours. Mm-hmm. I've ran twelve hours. Gotcha. So. <laughs> Uh, I haven't put an amp meter on it, but the math won't work that way. So clearly, one or not all of them are pulling an exact twenty-eight amps. I've I've never put an amp meter on a on a C light, mm-hmm. but those guys seem to have their stuff together. So I'm going to assume that they're probably pulling sourcing a little better, sourcing a little bit better than some dude from Amazon. Yeah, um, that's and, probably why they're in some of the light tests, or I think there was a light test yeah, on yeah. bow fishing country yeah, yeah. that they, they were they considerably brighter. Yeah, so uh, they probably do have a true fifty watt light. So you can you can do this math and it and it should work. But maybe we could have somebody on from there and get some further more information. information. That'd yeah. be cool. But so with lights, all it's just an equation, and I can we'll share the equation on the blog post, and it's it's really simple. So really, one more you, time, what was the equation? The equation is. Watts divided by volts. So you take your total wattage, 500 watts, divided by your total voltage, mm-hmm. which is 24. And then you have your amp draw. Okay. So that okay. is 20.83 amps. Then you say, okay, so my, my draw is 20.83 amps. And then I take my batteries mm-hmm. or, your, or your converter or generator, whatever the case may be, and say, okay, uh, I've got a 100 amp hour battery bank. Okay. So you take your amps drawn from your battery bank and you come to 4.8 hours of runtime. And when you go from a 12 to a 24 battery, when you put them in parallel, parallel, it does not change the amp hour rating. Okay. So when you series a battery, like, we, like we're doing in this example, taking two 12-volt batteries and turning it into one 24-volt. Yes. Okay. So you're just taking a, a lead, a, mm-hmm. a, a piece of, you know, Battery cable with two ends on it. I would highly recommend don't don't try to hot wire this thing. It's not a good idea. So with a good you know four six gauge cable, and you're connecting them together. So you're taking two 12 volts, seriesing them together. So from one positive to the other battery's negative, and then you have two ends on each side of the battery. One's a negative on one battery, and one's a positive on one battery that are now your main positive and negative. Mm -hmm. So then you have a 24 volt battery. When you series a battery, your voltage doubles, but your amperage stays the same. Okay. So two 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries turns into one 24 volt, 100 amp hour battery. Okay. If you parallel, so you take two 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries and you connect the positive and the positive and the negative and the negative, Mm -hmm. you have one 12 volt battery that is now 200 amps. Is there an advantage to going one way or the other? The, in my mind, the only advantage is that if you if you series, which makes mm-hmm. it a higher voltage, yep, you can run a smaller gauge cable. Okay. Because you're pushing. So, for instance, if you look at that amp load, so we had 500 watts, and divided by 24 was 20.8 amps. So you need to look at a cable to run your lights that can with withstand a continuous 20 amp draw through the cable. Mm-hmm. But if you divide that by 12 volts, your amperage is 41.66. So you're going to need a cable that can that can stand the heat of 41 amps. Gotcha. So, so you're going to have to go to a little heavier gauge. And, and heavier cable is more expensive. So yes. I do recommend if the light can be a 1224, go ahead and series up and, and make it a 24 volt. There's no advantage runtime or any other no, thing no, like that. Not Everything's at all. the exact same. Everything okay. all everything else uh, is the same. All things considered. 
So, gotcha. Yeah, that's that, and that's that's the most common question. And people say, "Oh man, I want to run all night on my trolling motor batteries." Well, so the easiest way for me to ask is, "Okay, so what do you have now?" Mm-hmm. So, I, oh, I've got three thirty ones, and how long does it last? Four hours. Okay. Well, you can do some math and find out their average amp draw, mm-hmm. but if if they're not all the same battery, if you're not fishing the same way every night, so the easiest way for me to say is, well, you you want to run twice as long, so you need twice as much battery. Battery, yeah. And that's the only way to do it. Now with lights, because it's consistent, you can say, here's what you need. Gotcha. So, so for a guy like I sold a set um, to a local guy, and uh, he said, hey, I've got two sets. So I have six total Group 31 batteries, which on average are around 90, 90, 95 amp hours. Mm-hmm. He said, I wanna, I'm tired of switching them halfway through the night. I said, okay, I've got some, some, some batteries, 190 amp hours each. You do or he does? I do. You do, okay. I, do. I sold him some. And uh, so it's going to double his amp hour. So it's a, it's a much bigger battery, obviously. Mm-hmm. And, but he's not going to have to switch. It's a lot better of a battery as well. Yeah. So um, basically what, what you can just do is say, well, he had, you know, six batteries at 90 amp hours a piece. So 36 volt they series. And you can, you can series up as many as you want and get as high a voltage as you want. Now, uh, obviously in our application, you're just going to, you know, do a 24, 12, 24, 36 yeah. for trolling or, or lights. And if you go to 110, then go ahead and uh, that's AC power. So it's a little different situation. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try that. <laughs> that's a bad idea. So uh, so anyway, he wanted to take some some of the, the, the boat batteries out of the boat and not have to switch them out through the night. So we said, here, take these. You're going to double your amp hours mm-hmm. and you're not going to have to switch because you're, you're saying that, you know, halfway through the night, you got to switch batteries. Yeah. So we were able to set him up and he was a happy camper. Same thing happened last season. You know, guys were running. I don't, I don't remember the exact details of that situation, but they even went so far as to get on our website and say, Hey, you know, they did, they did their own math, which I was, I was pretty impressed. And they ended up ordering. Is that the McCann brothers. Yeah. 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 The carp farmers are is yeah. That right. Yeah. Yeah. So they ordered some J one eighty fives, which is a floor scrubber battery. Yeah. So, and I, he, he called me, after a tournament, it's like, hey, I ran all night and my voltage is still like 34 volts. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they were tickled with the performance. But so if, so if you want to run all night, you need to buy J184. <laughs> J185Hs. 185Hs. Here's the only caveat they weigh about 130 pounds a piece. Okay. <laughs> so if you got a big enough boat and you want to be silent, I mean, it's great. But, you know. So there is ways if you man up and want to put a heavy, heavy batteries in your boat or have multiple batteries in your boat, you can Oh yeah. run all night. Oh yeah. on troller or lights. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, it's just it's just pros and cons, you mm-hmm. know. So, for instance, whether you want to run silent when we when we we got started, we always ran silent. I never had a generator. Mhm. And uh I was always like, oh, gosh, I couldn't stand it. I, there's no way I'd want to deal with all that noise. But going out on your boat, you mm-hmm. know, it wasn't, you get used to it. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but it's not so, so bad you can't talk over. I mean, no, no, and they, it's not. they're Honda 2000, so they're mm-hmm. not, yeah. not super loud. And but, you're running two. So, yeah. So, even, so this year we are converting, uh, we're doing, uh, you know, we're going to run generators for our lights. We're still, we actually are going to run a 36 volt trolling motor. We're going to run lithiums this year. Yeah. So just a little perk of being in the battery business. Let's get into lithiums a little bit. Oh, I know gosh. it's a, uh, it's kind of a new technology and, uh, it's, it's new. And, uh, there's a lot of folks that are kind of not scared of it, but just, you know, it's, it's a new frontier, so to speak. They are, they are not cheap. So correct me if I'm wrong. Everybody, you know, some of these threads you'll read and they're like, oh, I want to run longer on batteries. They're like, well, go lithium. Lithiums really don't run Mm-mm. longer Mm-mm. than any of the other it, same group size batteries. It's just that they run hotter until they're done, right? Yeah, so um, 
the analogy that I can use is people are, that are still listening to this podcast at 59 minutes, they've obviously <laughs> um, had nights where they go out and, you know, three or four hours in, they go, oh, man, the troll motor is starting to really drag. I hate but, that, yeah. But they know that it's still working because it's still spinning, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So a flooded or an AGM battery has a power curve that, you're, that you are experiencing in that moment. So it starts off strong, right? Mm-hmm. And it actually gets a little stronger as a, as you know, in the first probably 20, 30 minutes. Yep. It'll cycle up in the in the you know, actual output will go up a little bit and then it starts a decline and you'll it'll just fall, 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 fall until it falls flat on its face and it's dead, right? Lithium, think about your smartphone. Okay. Okay. So you've got your phone, right? And you you you're cruising the internet all day, texting, whatever, playing games. And you watch that percentage bar, and it drops slowly. So I'm at 59% right now. At 59% on your trolling motor, you'd feel a difference. But when you're playing with your phone, there's no functional difference between... So you're saying with AGM or a regular battery at 59 or 50%, you're going to start feeling that power curve you're get gonna, weak, yeah, or the power yeah. get weak. So, so with a lithium battery, they're, the power curve is almost non-existent. There's a, there is a slight curve there, but, mm-hmm. but you'll never experience it. You'll never really feel it. But what that means is it's going to go, 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 and then just shut down, just like your phone. So you you could be running along with the trolling motor, and if, if it's dead it's at, dead, at it's 2 dead. in the morning, she gone. Yeah. It, no, it'll go from like 99% power mm-hmm. to zero, just like, like if you've got a new DeWalt drill. Yeah, you know, you've seen it. You know, you're you're you know in, got an impact wrench and you're pushing a screw into a board, and halfway through it just goes, boop, and it's done. Yeah, that's it. So same story. Gotcha. So people will say they last a lot longer because they have more usable power over the power curve. Gotcha. And so, lithiums actually have a computer board in them. Is that correct? Yes. So so there's two forms of lithium. Um, they have either have onboard or offboard charging um, management systems. Um, an offboard management system means that it has to have a very special charger, and you can only charge the battery through that one charger. And it's basically just a lot of cells connected, and then the charger in the control manual or the control board is off of the battery. An internal, which is what most people and most marine batteries are going to actually has a control board inside and it's not like a little control board it's like you know like a five by seven board yeah so what that board does is actually will do new numerous things just maintaining the battery and making sure the cells are interacting with each other properly but it also has a lot of safety features backed into it so if you take a piece of rebar and you connect the positive and negative on a regular old battery, you're going to get some sparks, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you take a piece of rebar and connect the positive and negative on a lithium battery, it would make more than sparks if there wasn't a control board. Gotcha. It would get... Get nasty. It would get... Yeah. <laughs> it's not sparks. It's a fireball. Yeah. Um, but with the control board... What maybe, it maybe that's to, what uh, the Galaxy, they had rebar in there and it just... <laughs> Somebody at the factory is like yeah. cross arcing batteries for the fun of it. And so anyway, anyway, yeah, yeah. Now they're now you can't fly with that phone. So I almost ordered that phone. Did you? Yeah. So so the board does more than just regulate it; it protects it. Yes, and it's a keeps... protection system. Um, it's, no, sometimes you'll see them called a PCB, a protection protected circuit board. So what that allow you to do is so you could arc it like that, and it's just going to shut down. It's gonna it's gonna shut off. And there's, you know, depending on what lithium battery you have, there's different ways to reset it. Okay, back to back to normal. Um, we in in some of our testing of some lithium products, uh, it was kind of a new new process, new education altogether for me. Uh, they don't act like a normal battery does. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean there's it's wrong. It's just we have to change and educate ourselves so that we know how to how to interact with them. So not only will it you know, protect from a short circuit. Um, say you hook a charger up backwards, mm-hmm. you know, but that would be bad if you did that on a regular battery. This would just shut down. Um, for instance, say the cells start to get too hot. 
uh, at a certain temperature threshold, the, the board will shut down. It gets too cold, it's going to shut down. Mm-hmm. That is one of the downfalls of lithium. They don't perform as well in super cold temperatures. Define super cold. Like uh, negative or like... Uh, I don't know the exact We're not going to hold you to the exact No, don't number. hold me to it, but like I've, I've heard, you know, 10 degrees and below. Gotcha. Which Cause sounds I, like... Because I'd always read on trail cameras that lithiums handle cold better than alkaline batteries. Not that we're really talking about trail cameras, but... It's a different chemistry. Okay. Lithium primary and lithium ion. Okay. It is different, but I've actually, I've heard the opposite of that. Have you? But I've never tested it, so I don't, I don't really know. Gotcha. So so anyway, yeah, lithium is a, is an interesting proposition. Um, They're really cool, um, but they are expensive. Um, Do you think they're going to get, I mean, not necessarily cheap like an AGM or a wet cell, but do you... Like any technology, I mean, the they're prices gonna, keep falling. They're going to have, I, I do think they're going to come down. The only, I would say yes, no question, they yeah. will come down. It's just to what number? It's to what number. And the other thing that's important to realize is lithium as an element is expensive to get out of the ground. Gotcha. So, you know, it's it's always going to be inherently expensive unless we just find a massive lithium reserve somewhere. It's harder to find lithium than distilled water and lead. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, I mean, there's still, I mean, there's lead mines in Missouri, and there's a lead mine in Missouri. Yeah. So there's no lithium mine in Missouri. So anyway, um, it's kind of speculation, but yeah, I kind of wanted to see what it would do. So, yeah, my dad's actually testing some out for you guys, mm-hmm. and. He likes him. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, he likes that at the end of the day, his trolling motor is base, basically runs like it does when you come off a charge with a regular set of batteries. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it'll yank you around and it, there's no lag in it. It's it's going. It's going. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, full power the entire time. So Andy saved like 100 and... 200 pounds of weight in his boat. I mean, that's the that's, old, that's a, a real big upside. That's a big one. Uh, <laughs> you know, these batteries weigh 21 pounds a piece compared to 68 pounds. So yes. that's, uh, that's significant. So it just, it just depends on there's again, there's not a, it's not a one, one size fits all, you know, you know, I could see a mud motor rig, like a single mud motor rig. That's mm-hmm. really stripped down and, and, Running shallow and trying not to have a ton of weight in the boat. I mean that be optimal. I mean they're they're a little pricey, but it it could definitely be an option. Mm-hmm. I mean yeah. I'm not going to throw prices out because yeah. I have no idea. But <laughs> well, okay, I can. Uh, so retail on a regular Group Thirty One, so like comparatively a, a Group Thirty One hundred amp hours, you're looking at um, eleven hundred fifty bucks a piece. Hmm. So I'll take four. <laughs> no, <I'm> just <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, we're I'm gonna test some, uh, but ooh, you know, they're high. So it's just an, it's we're what, starting what, to get what more. you do for your company. You know, product yeah, testing. You know, it's it must hey, be rough. Yeah, it's just the it's just a burden, just a real burden. So, yeah. No, I had my charger on my boat. I had a I had a charger rep come. In CS like a year and a half ago when we were putting our boat together. And it was like mm-hmm. two and a half years ago. Come and see us and trying to sell us some chargers or something. And uh, he plopped this one down on the table and was like, hey, you know, take a look at this one. See if you like. I was like, well, you know, we really like to test this stuff. You know, it was kind mm-hmm. of later on there to seeing what would happen. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, oh, you have a boat? I was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, well, uh, I'm sure you've already got a charger. But I, I mean, if you'd like to test this, he's like, yeah, you know, I do have a charger, but I'll test this one. I didn't have a charger. Is that how he <laughs> talked? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> My facial expression is probably awful, but... So, have hey. we covered everything we've been... We kind of wanted to... I... Let me, maybe. Let me, let, me, let me back up here. Because we're at an hour and nine minutes. Uh, okay. Quick, quick things. We talked about this a little bit. How many amps to charge different batteries? Um, guys, if you're trying to charge your light battery to charge or your trolling motor batteries... I would recommend a 10 amp charger. Uh, five amp works, but it's just going to take twice as long. Um, anything less than five, you're just wasting your time. 
So, you know. So if you're shooting a tournament or you're wanting to go out two nights in a row, definitely go with 10 amp charger. Yes. Yes. Another important thing to know, and this is just kind of basic battery 101. Um, if you are taking a voltmeter to your batteries and seeing where they are, a fully charged battery is at 12.65 volts. So if you test your batteries and it's like, oh, it's at 12.1 volts, that's fully charged. No, that dude is dead. <laughs> so <laughs> at 12.24 volts, a battery is at 50% of its capacity. That's good That's good to know for sure. Yeah. I, I would assume if I threw one on there and it was 12 volts, I'd be like, it's a dang 12-volt battery. We're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. So it, no, it is not. So that's. I thought that would be kind of um, pertinent information. Um, if anybody's still listening. If anyone is still <laughs> listening. So that's cool. Um, series versus parallel. Again, that's a, one that we get questions for a bunch. Again, series, you are doubling your voltage, not your amperage. Parallel, you're doubling your amperage, not your voltage. And when you series a battery, you're con- taking two and connecting the positive and the negative of the two batteries so that you then have 124 volt. Um, if you are parallel, you're taking the positive and the positive, connecting those two together, and the negative and the negative, connecting those two together. And when you hook those up, it's important to um, hook the negative on the negative of one battery and the positive on the positive of the other battery, if that makes sense, on a parallel, so that you are pulling current equally through the entire set. Gotcha. Okay. So if you've got them paralleled and you hook the positive and the negative on the same battery, even though it is paralleled, that one battery will be discharged faster than the other. Hmm. And that will basically make the set unequal and uh, you're not going to get as good a performance over the life of those two batteries. Gotcha. Yeah. So common misconceptions. Um, Sitting a battery on concrete causes it to fail. That's a lie. I still put it on a board. It's a lie. <laughs> the common, the thing that most of us think that came from is back in the day, a battery would discharge really fast, mm-hmm. like in a month and a half. Like it could be dead just from sitting. So a dirty old battery, you're not going to put it on your counter. You're not going to put it anywhere. You're just going to sit on the floor and they pick it up a month later and be like, oh, it's dead. Must be the concrete. Must be the concrete <laughs> sucking the juice out of it. It's like the Earth's magnetic power sucking the juice. No. Sorry. No, I'm not gonna lie. I still, I do. I put, I put my batteries on a board. Well, okay, you're wrong. I know. Um, urine, aspirin, or pennies do not reduce sulfation or extend the life of a battery. <laughs> Those are all things I have been told. Those are all lies. Don't well, try it. Like peeing in the battery. Like peeing in the battery. Could that shock you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's DC. Okay. <laughs> it's why. Not every- <laughs> So when you flood a boat, <laughs> yeah, and it like sinks, it's like that's why everybody on the water doesn't die immediately because it's okay. a DC power. Gotcha. AC. So anyway, gotcha. Not to get graphic, a uh, freezer will not bring back dead double A's. Yeah, no, won't Dang do it. it. So quit, I got all my trail camera batteries in the freezer. Yeah, phonies. It, it. Some people say it makes them last longer if if they haven't been used. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I'm not a no. They have like a 10-year shelf life. This is useful information right here. I, You know, these are the common misconceptions that I get a bunch. So let me, let me keep shuffling through here, make sure. Uh, you know, if the battery cap is red, that's probably the positive. Yeah, you black know? would be negative. Black is negative. But just, just a home tip. I come from the world of DC power and batteries, right? I thought the black, when I was wiring something in my house. I hadn't done it yet. Uh-huh. I thought the black was the negative and the white was the, you know, the ground maybe. Yeah. No. Negative. No. That was the hot one. I'm glad I didn't hook that up <laughs> <laughs> without asking somebody. So, we talked about this. Do not put regular water in a battery. Put distilled water. And even more importantly, when your battery starts to die, I've had people say, well, I need to put some more acid in it. Do not put more acid in in a battery that's already been activated. That will kill the battery, like fast, like in a day. So do not put more acid back in a battery that's like six months old. The battery is at a certain pH level, and if you add more acidity to it, it's just going to cause the plates to break down, and it doesn't going to work. So don't put more batteries in it. Hmm. Uh, 
yeah, I hope I hope this was helpful. I think the first ten minutes we kind of rambled some, but you know, yeah, that's all right. So, do you have any concluding thoughts? Um, batteryoutfitters dot com. Just fill it, fill up that shopping cart. Yeah, send send the orders my way. No, seriously, if uh, if you have a battery question, shoot us an email uh, or find me, Pate Shoemaker, on Facebook or Instagram, and shoot me a message, and I'll be happy to help. Um, you know, rest in peace, my inbox. Hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it'll be fine. Um, uh, we can we can help with all sorts of stuff. We sell chargers, cable, batteries, the whole nine yards. So awesome. That's my concluding thought. Yeah, I had an awesome one on the way down here. Oh yeah, and I forgot what it was. Dang it. Yeah, it Dang wasn't it. it wasn't very deep or anything, but it was a good one. Mm. So you know, plug social media. Yeah, Rough Fish Registry on Facebook and Instagram, and uh, got our website roughfishregistry.com mm-hmm. you can actually subscribe there to listen to our podcast from that place or you can go to iTunes or YouTube check them out there mm-hmm. and that's it yeah be sure to like or subscribe or leave a comment on our iTunes page that yeah. helps us index properly and uh, we need a you guys can help us come up with a a catchphrase for the end of the show. Oh, yeah. You know, because like Gritty Bowman's, you know, keep it gritty. Keep it gritty. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, I like that. That's a good one. It's so yeah. smart. I wish I could have Joe Rogan on my podcast. Yeah. We'd probably have to put an explicit uh, symbol on yeah. that podcast. That's okay. Yeah. One time pass. That's right. So, okay. Yeah. Well, if guys. you guys have any, uh, sorry, if you guys have any suggestions on who you'd like on the show, let us know. Um, we're, Working every week trying to get some new people on. Got uh, next week will be a pretty good show with a cool organization. Mm-hmm. Uh, no. Yeah. Next week? I don't know. Maybe last week. Yeah. Yeah, last week's was. Nobody's listening. It's okay. Nobody's listening at this <laughs> point. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I just want to say, my mom's probably listening because she told me yesterday that she's listened to all of them so far. Yeah. I was kind of embarrassed. Was she impressed? I doubt it. My mom was like, what is a podcast? I was <laughs> like, we just talk about bow fishing. She's like, do people call in? I'm like, no, just me and him sitting, talking to the microphones. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while we'll be talking and I like, we'll make eye contact and it's like kind of weird. What is going on? <laughs> All right. This is it. We're done. Yep. Hey, see ya. See ya. Bye. <laughs>